I just received my The Art of G.I. Joe omnibus this week, and I am blown away by the size and quality of this book. I received this book because I backed the Kickstarter that Carson Metaxas started to raise funds to put together this book. For years, he's been collecting art and, you know, kind of cleaning it up and putting it online so people can share and understand and, and appreciate all the amazing artwork that goes into the, the packaging, the advertising, all the different aspects of the creation of these toys that we love. And so, you know, I was just excited that, you know, it funded that we got this book finally and we can actually look through this this amazing tome that he's he's made for us. The book comes in this clamshell case, which is, I think, magnetically held shut. It's really nice, really solid. And you open it up, and it looks like the figure case from when we were kids that you could put all your G.I. Joe action figures into. And on top of the book is this great portfolio of different artworks from G.I. Joe. I think half of them were picked by the backers and half were you know, picked by the uh, the people who actually worked on the on the book. And they're just really neat pieces. Like this one from the train set. And then some of those awesome kind of action, you know, shots of the different different characters. You know, Snow Job. And then these these great iconic kind of images of G.I. Joe, like the team, you know, kind of ready for battle. This is one of my favorite. It's just a, an amazing shot, and it, it's great to have this. I have the, uh, the lunchbox that has this, this same image on it, and it's really nice to have a, a nice print of it. And here's a quick, you know, just shot overview of all the, um, all the different prints that come with it. And this is just included with the book, which is amazing. I, I mean, I just wanted the book, and, you know, to have that many prints is a pretty, pretty awesome addition. The thing that struck me the most was just how big the book is. You know, Carson kept showing, you know, back and forth ideas of like how big the book should be and comparing it to other books. So I grabbed some of the biggest art books and, you know, different books I had. And it just, it blows them all away. It's it's thicker than, you know, almost every book I have. I think this is the only book I have that's thicker. It's this, you know, kind of Marvel Universe Um you know, it's like a compilation of, of when they, they put out the comics that had every single superhero in there. And you can see that's thicker. That's like a thousand something pages, 1200 pages. It's just, it's just crazy. And then I've had this um, Modern Warplanes book for years. And it's always been the biggest book I have, I think. Um, you know, it's thick and it's pretty huge. And the Omnibus just kind of puts it to shame. It's just like, yeah, that's... That's pretty good, but you could have gone a little wider with that. And um, this is an awesome book. I've I've always loved this. And uh, you know, it just this is this is going to take the uh, the top tier. And then just some other books I have that are large format, and it just um, it just blows them all away. There, no uh, no expense was spared. Um, you know, with the size and the weight and the uh, the the cost of putting a book this large together. One negative to that is just like, where are you going to keep this? So I have a, a few bookcases in my house. And so I was thinking, okay, could I could I put it here where I've got some of my other sort of like toy related stuff, you know, just like some random books. And I think I could, but you can see it sticks out, you know, good, good couple, two or three inches more than all the other books there. And those are some big like format books, like those Star Wars and uh, cross section books. So you can see it's just like sticking out there. So this is in my living room. I don't think it's going to work there. So I went into my office. I have um, a couple other bookcases in there um, with art books. And so here, this is a deeper bookshelf, and I think it'll work. All those other books are just not pushed back to the back of the book, the bookcase. But um, but here, this one works. But but even there, you can see it just it just dwarfs all the other art books I have, which are you know pretty big size big format uh, art book. So just an awesome addition to my collection. And so now I thought we'd just walk through the book. Um, I'm not going to go every page because this thing is like way too big, but I really like, you know, videos where you can kind of get a really good feel for what's in the book. And as you can see, and as you'll see as we flip through this book, it has everything. Carson has really, really had done himself just the amount of material that he must have collected and gone through and, you know, prepared just to lay out all these pages, you know, he's been posting about that and discussing it and, you know, all the work and you can see the, 
the blood, sweat, and tears, and love that have been put into this book. I also don't want to forget to mention uh, Chad Huckle, who I believe was um, you know, someone who really helped Carson a lot on this with preparing the artwork. A lot of this stuff was you know, kind of beat up or old photographs or not full photographs or maybe missing parts or, you know, damaged parts. And there's a real art to, you know, going in Photoshop or some kind of editing software. I'm not sure what they used. And, you know, kind of sampling things and, you know, making the colors and the, you know, the, the values and just the saturation to feel, feel good. And, you know, the way it was back in the day when it was printed. So, I wanted to mention Chad because I know Carson has called him out many times and, you know, his name's on the book. He he deserves a lot of credit for putting in all his time to this. And so you can see just flipping through this, it's it's amazing. You can see all the, you know, the, the figures on the card back, see the art of the card backs, the vehicles. I mean, I love those vehicle boxes and they're all there and you can just really see them in a massive size. I mean, I think some of these are probably as big as the boxes were, or, you know, in some cases maybe bigger. And there are some places where, you know, Carson will zoom in on a specific part of the art to kind of, you know, really focus on it. And these fold out sections are really great because they really give a big, big format uh, to look at, at the art where you can see it, you know, and there like you can zoom in and almost see the brush strokes of the, uh, of the artist. You know, what were they doing? How were they you know, using a brush or using an airbrush, you can really see the, the kind of different style that the different artists in here were using and, you know, how they were kind of taught, you know, more, more traditional, more modern kind of style. You know, this is all pre-digital. It's mostly, I think, um, oils or gouache or maybe some watercolors, but, you know, there's no one who's like starting off in, in Photoshop in any of these. And here it's like awesome. All the little inserts, the kind of little notes and you know, sort of like, oh, this is where this piece of art was used. And, you know, maybe it was repurposed for different things and, you know, different kinds of ads. And, you know, there you can really see the, the detail in that. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to zoom in on a few just so you could kind of see some of the detail. There, I know Carson was showing the differences between some of the heads, like, um, yeah, I think it's Cover Girl on the Wolverine cover. They changed her. I love these. I love these pen drawings. They so remind me of the Star Wars um, sketchbooks, you know, the, the stuff they were doing there. And I'm sure these guys were influenced by, you know, some of the, the concepts coming out of Star Wars and the, the way they were just using, using pen, you know, and washes and things like that. Oh, love the Moray. That Moray painting is just fantastic. And then the Mauler. The Mauler, one of the interesting ones, you actually see the back side of the Mauler. It's driving away from the viewer, which is kind of interesting. And these are just great. And then just seeing those those ads, all the different marketing. <laughs> Look at that saboteur toolkit. And then all these promo pieces. It's just amazing how they found all this. This page I thought was a little dark. It seemed interesting. You know, that's something you look for in a book like the consistency of the printing, you know, do the blacks go too black? Are you able to see the detail in the blacks? And I don't know if these these originals were, were dark too, but I bet they did, a, I'm, I'm sure Carson did a good job to try to match that. So you wonder if, um you know, at some points were, was Hasbro consistent with all their printing? Oh, man, I love these, these figures from this time period are so so good they're adding so much detail and then look at that like seeing some of the sculpts that's awesome just seeing the sculpture there you know what were the how were the figures made how were they created you know from concept art to sculpting cereal boxes all that kind of crazy stuff the posters oh, and then some more sketches look at that that's great where you know they were able to take advantage of the the fold out page and then for the animated series. So I think a lot of people love that art too. You know, it's the comic book art, um, you know, the production art. And then being able to put the animated art in here is, is great because you don't really see that as much. So by now you can see I'm flipping through this and it is a giant book. What's neat, um, something you might notice over on the right side there is the uh, the years. So Carson has a cool system where 
you know, kind of like an old uh, dictionary. If you are old enough to have used a paper dictionary, you know, you could kind of grab the letters on the side and see what, uh, you know, how far you were along in the alphabet. He's got the years going along the page there, which is really nice. And look at that. Look at that. It's, it almost reminds me of the Bat Cave, but it's like Cobra. Just the way that's laid out with the Cobra Commander at the center and all the vehicles around him. Some of these pieces of art, you know, I bet most of us have never seen and never would see if, you know, if Carson hadn't compiled all this into this, this book. You know, I'll admit this is like my first time going through it. So I really haven't gone through and studied that and, you know, seen some of these, these different, um, different examples of, you know, the characters and the development. Yeah, more sculpts. I, I love that seeing the 3D, you know, the sculpting and stuff. And then there you can see how it's bound. I'm not sure what that's called, but I know it's pretty good quality. So they're not just glued in. It looks like it's stitched in so that the paper, you know, something this big, a book this big, if it's just glued. I know I have some books where the glue after a while will separate and that kind of comes off the binding. This looks like it's made to last, which is awesome. Because then you're not scared of actually like keeping this book open and flipping through it and you know, coming back to it again and again over the years. Because you really think about this book, it's like nothing is going to be made like this again. They're never going to make a book, you know, to, to top this. So this is going to be the book you're going to have on your bookcase forever. Look at that, the MCC, love it. And all these books, these like, I don't know, I guess like novels, you know, with these like awesome, awesome paintings, just beautiful paintings. I've seen that one with the more. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Almost like Frazetta feel. Kind of like that Pulp Fiction kind of stuff. And then kind of more modern stuff. Some of those look like a little airbrushed. Tunnel rat jumping out of the tomahawk. Really, really neat stuff. And this just shows the... Uh, I guess the years, you know, and the different phases that G.I. Joe went through. So in a way, this this is the art, but the art really shows the different styles and changes that happened over the years, which is really interesting to see in like one book as you're just kind of flipping through and the decisions that are made. There's also, I know, a lot of text in here, a lot of interviews. Um, I'll admit, when I get art books, I mostly look at the pictures. I don't like reading a reading the words that much, you know, that the descriptions, but this looks like it'll be fun to look through and read the interviews, read the different influences, why things changed, what the different artists were thinking at the time they worked on this. And you can see this is just a really extensive catalog of all the figures that came out and the cards, you know, a lot of people just love the card art, you know, collect the cards. Oh, look at the equalizer. Just makes me think of a uh, if you don't know, I made an RC equalizer and just, that was like a project I just like always wanted to do and like love it. Yeah, and there's the, was that the, the Deke? Um, not the Sunbow, but the later animated series. So we're getting into a different phase of G.I. Joe. You see the card backs changing, getting that, you know, the digital background. Still some pretty cool vehicles. This is like past my time. I was too old to be playing with G.I. Joe's at this point or really buying them anymore. Um, but it's cool to see like some of the, the crazy colors. I just know like the Eco Warriors and stuff. Uh, Ninja Force and stuff. Wow, look at that painting. That's really neat. It's interesting how stylized some of the artists will get. They'll really have fun with the characters. Like Roadblock there. Cobra Commander behind the, uh, with the Earth behind him. Sonic Fighters. There's Ninja Force. Getting those bright colors out. You know, really stretching the, um, the palette at this point. And then the, the sprues. Look at that, man. That's wild. Those, those creatures don't even feel like G.I. Joe in a way. But it's neat to have them in here, you know, just to, to kind of show 
show the evolution and what you know a large you know huge toy franchise goes through you know over the years or, or decades in gi joe's case look at these paintings they're they're really like they seem like oil paintings i'm sure there's like a lot of airbrushing in that one it looks like it looks like it's got like a lot of blending looks too like we're getting near the end of the book so um we're going to wrap it up soon. I hope you enjoyed this flip through of the book. Um, it's a lot longer than I thought it was. Um, but it's it's worth like checking it out. I, I think it gives a good feel of the book. Carson has really done an amazing job here. And there will never be another book like this. So I'd recommend getting it now while you can. Because you know once this is gone, they're not going to make another book like this. It just, it's just pretty amazing. So again, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope we'll see you in the next one. And yo, Joe.